This is Harry Judge for Boxing Social. It's press conference day, John Ryder versus Zach. Yeah, how are we, mate, first of all? It's been a long time, Frank. All good, mate. All good. Really good. Good to see you. I'm saying a bit cold up here, though. It is a bit cold, isn't it? It's a bit cold for November, I'd say, Frank. I know. I'm not used to it. I'm not, I've been in the sunshine for, for a couple of weeks, so now I'm back in, the, back in the freezing cold. But all good, mate. What are you expecting? Saturday night, huge, huge headline for, for John Ryder, your man. Yeah, 100%. Look, it's a massive fight. Big opportunity as well for the winner coming off the back of this. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the winner possibly fighting Canelo Alvarez. Uh, John Ryder's, you know, John Ryder's been a, a, a pro for a long time now. He's been in some big fights. So, you know, I think he's going to be comfortable going in there on Saturday night. It's a tough fight. Zach Parker's a very good fighter. But, you know, I truly believe John Ryder's going to go in there and do the job. John Ryder, um, let's say, well, um, you know, Zach Parker's been out the ring for, for a long time. Do you think the... Yeah, that's going to play a big factor in this fight. Yeah, for sure. But I also think, you know, John's coming off a good win against Danny Jacobs at the early part of the year. You know, he's uh, that was a good a good test for him as well. You know, Danny Jacobs, we've all seen what he's done in his career. So, you know, for John Ryder to go in there and get the win against him, that's, uh, that's set him up well for this one. Yeah, people were just noticing that you're here, Frank. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good. you too. This styles make fights, big domestic fights traditionally live up to expectation I'm expecting a big you know two blokes really going for it on Saturday yeah because this is a big big fight in both of their careers you know this is their opportunity to go on and take it to the next level um, and in, they've only got they've only got this chance now really to, to go and do it so I think you're going to get 100% from both of them you obviously you know in contact with Canelo you know quite a lot as well um, there are talks that he may have a run out in sort of February May time you know how likely is that the winner will fight Canelo yeah, possibly for sure. You know, there's a lot of fights that I think Canelo's looking at for May time and then September he wants the rematch against Dimitri Bivol. So I think let's see let's see how it plays out. But, you know, first things first, they've both got to be focused on what's ahead of them in May. Oh, sorry, this weekend. Yeah, this weekend as well. You know, obviously you've spoken to, for John as well as the away fighter. I was spoken to him as well yesterday. What's the feeling like going into this fight, Frank? You know, he's very comfortable. He's confident. You know, he's, like I say, he's been around for so long, so many years now. Um, you know, it's not... This isn't the first major moment for him. You know, he's had big fights throughout the years. He's been on away cards. You know, I think it was years ago he fought Billy Joe Saunders on a Frank Warren card. Um, you know, you kind of forget how long John Ryder has been around for and the fights he's been in because he's been pro for so long. So, you know, I think he's comfortable. I don't think that's a concern for him. You've been quite in attendance in many uh, and other people's shows. Obviously, you last with the last time out of the boxer show here at BT this weekend. You don't mind stepping on, on enemy territory, Frank? No, I'm, I'm the nice, I'm the friend, I'm the friendly, uh, friendly, friendly one. So, uh, no, of course, look, it's good, it's good to see people working together. Ultimately, you know, that's what's key to making the right fights and the big fights in the sport. So, you know, I think I'd like to think, you know, we're always open to doing that. Also, Matram, big fight on Saturday night, huge uh, for Dillian White as well. Just talk me through that card for us, Frank. Yeah, look, stat card, you know, Dillian White's return, obviously coming off the back of the Tyson Fury loss. I think Jermaine Franklin's going to be a tough fight. You know, it's not it's not an easy easy comeback fight for him. Um, you've also got the British heavyweight title, Gorman against Wardley on there as well. Uh, you've got Craig Richards against Richard Belotniks. You've got Pat McCormack's first fight with us, Mark Dickinson, Sandy Ryan's back out. Um, George Liddard's pro debut. Uh, Chef Clark as well. Um, so stack card from top to bottom and looking forward to that one. Um, you know, it's good to it's good to see a fighter like Dillian coming back in, like I say, in a in a good fight. You know, people may be writing Jermaine Franklin off, but you know, he's undefeated and he, he's ready to go and this this is a fight that can change his life. Um, but you know, we've all seen what Dillian can do and I think he's gonna be I think he's gonna be a tear up. That British title as well, Gorman and, and, and uh, yeah, Fabio Worley, I think that could probably headline another card. That is a huge fight. Yeah, that's what we were looking at originally was Gorman Wardley headlining a show. Uh, because of the time frames, it worked out that it went on that undercard. You know, it's a, it's a, look, it's a, it's a, it's a great fight. Um, and a fight we've been, you know, it's, it's taken a bit longer to get it on than we originally thought. It was supposed to be in September. But, you know, it's, uh, it's good to get that back up and running and, and uh, you know, a good fight for the card. I think it's stacked top to bottom. And, you know, I don't think you can really complain about the show on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are putting Gorman as favourite because of the experience. Um, but, yeah, you can't really, these British title fights, it can go either way Frank yeah 100 percent you know I think Gorman like you say has had the experience he's been in there uh, but I think Fabio you know Fabio's maybe hasn't had the pro experience in the in the ring but he's had a lot of great sparring um, and I think I think it's an opportunity he's ready for and you know it's going to be a it's going to be a big night for Fabio Wardley hopefully going to get a, a, a conversation with either George or Francis again today no uh, questions really about the pay-per-view price of uh, Derek Chisora and Tyson Fury what did you make of that you know 26.95 
a lot of complaints online, Frank, but I suppose you understand it as you know, being a businessman and being in that position as well. Yeah, look, they have to make the fight add up. You know, it is expensive, but they have to make the financials add up on their end. Obviously, that's what they've, that's what they've done, um, and that's the reason behind it. But, you know, ultimately, every, every decision that's made has to stack up. Um, you know, so I can understand. Um, probably should have been 20 quid, but that's what they had to do to make the fight happen. Also, yeah, was they unable to ask questions in terms of the IBF situation with Usyk? Do you think that's going to be a fact? Do you think that will stop that fight? I mean, look, the IBF have always followed their rules and, you know, ultimately they've ordered the mandatory challenger against Alexander Usyk, which is Filip Hergovic. You know, we have to do the job for Filip Hergovic as his promoter with the Sourlands and, uh, and deliver him the biggest fight. He's worked his way up to that point. He's been in the final eliminator, so he should get his chance to challenge for the world title. Do you think in that case, then, we're never going to see an undisputed heavyweight fight? I think I think we will. Obviously, look, it, that fight could have happened in December. Or if that fight was already contracted and he wasn't fighting Derek Chisora, then you would have had the fight made between Fury and Usyk now, and the mandatory wouldn't be relevant. Currently, there's no fight made between those two guys because the, uh, Derek Chisora is fighting Tyson Fury. So you know, it just depends on decisions that are made and, and, and time frames ultimately. Will you be attending next week for Fury Chisora? I'm not. I'm in a, in America for Estra, uh, Chocolatito against Estrada three, so uh, I'll, I'll miss it. I'm a big luck. It's not a bad, not a bad alternative though. <laughs> I get on well with Derek. You know, I've known Derek for a long time. He's a good friend, and like I wish him, I wish him all the best. So I'd love to have been there, but unfortunately, you know, we've got our own show that we need to be at. So, uh, well, you know, not unfortunately, but obviously, look, that's a, it's a big fight for him. Big opportunity to go in there and and. Uh, become WBC world champion who would, have, who would have thought years ago I was talking to the other day about like when he fought Ajit Kabayao in Monaco you know that result that he'd be back to where he is now you know it's quite amazing to see yeah I'm not really against the fight to be honest I've seen worse heavyweight fights out there and I think Jajor is always going to bring it the only factor is unfortunately it's outside in December it'll be a little, bit cold Frank to be honest yeah I did think that was mad um but we, everyone owns coats, so I'm sure they'll have those on there. Coats and ponchos, I reckon it's going to chuck it down, Frank. Hello. And there'll be some beer flying around. So, uh, no, but, you know, that's, pro- that's my reason for going to America. It's much warmer than Wembley, uh, than Tottenham on a, on a December night. Uh, Eddie Hearn said he's put another bigger offer for uh, the Terry Harper and Natasha Jonas fight. Could you just clarify on, on that? Yeah, that's correct. You know, uh, they came back, said they'll come back to us. Didn't hear back, so we sent them a new offer. You know, it's the fight that needs to be made. Undisputed, she's uh, Tasha's done a great job this year, going to, going around, you know, winning the other three belts. Um, I don't see a reason why that fight shouldn't happen. Um, massive, massive fight for Undisputed. Um, you know, I saw people saying, whether it's Joe Gallagher saying about Matrim, but then he wants to fight Casey Taylor. So I don't really understand whether it can't be anything to do with us. Um, but look, it's the fight that needs to be made undis- to crown an undisputed champion. Ultimately, that's everyone's dream in the sport. So let's see what happens. Yeah, they're saying that she's got bigger offers from elsewhere. Could you sort of look at what sort of offers would she have had, do you reckon? I can't imagine. Look, I, I can't honestly, unless they say about Clarissa Shields going up in weight, but they say that 154 is not her natural weight. So I don't know. Um, that's the only fight I can imagine that's possibly bigger. Or in terms of, or gives her a financial benefit similar to this one um, but I don't know let, let's see how things play out again like I say if you've got the opportunity to become undisputed and earn you know more than you've ever earned in your career um, surely that's what everyone dreams of but let's see what happens just a final two more for me what is the current situation with Lawrence Coley everything's escalating online and it's on social media so what's your knowledge of the situation Frank yeah look we, ultimately we're as, as you would have heard, we're comfortable in our position. We had a fight, we'll have a fight left with Lawrence O'Coley, um, and that process is ongoing now. You know, we have to let that play out and, and see what happens. But you know, we're we're very confident and comfortable in our position. I think we've done a great job for Lawrence O'Coley, delivered for him over the years. So, you know, let's see. How disappointed are you? Because you must have had a com- close relationship with with Lawrence. Yeah, he's been with you for a number of years, Frank. Yeah, I mean, it's always you know, ultimately. Uh, I think it's been said, you know, he's got people around him telling him things that maybe aren't 100% correct. But who are those sort of, who are those people that you think? No, but ultimately, you know, that's that's what happens with a lot of the athlete. You know, they have people around. You, you would have seen it. We all see it. Um, they have people around him who aren't experts, but you know, pretend to be experts. So look, I'm not even going to go into detail. Look, ultimately, would we have loved to have carried on with Lawrence Coley? Yes, we've invested a lot of money into Lawrence Coley. I think we've done a good job. I think he's done a great job. 
Um, you know, he's got ultimately he's got the wins and won the belts, but we've helped deliver that. You know, he left the AJ's management as well, who also I think delivered a great job for him. So, you know, and he's not even training with Shane McGuigan. So, I think you only have to look at all those elements to say, you know, it's not just us. It's AJ's management team. It's he's not training with Shane McGuigan. Like, well, you know, there, there's something obviously not quite 100 percent right there. Um, Callas said in the future he's open to negotiations for Ben Eubank to go and to continue once again. Is there really an appetite for that fight now, Frank, after what's happened? I think it's bigger than ever. Obviously, look, connor has got to deal with All the wrong reasons, though, surely, Frank. Yeah, but if Connor deals with his situation and it comes out in the, manner, in the way that we believe it will, why should he not, you know, ultimately, it is bigger than ever. You know, there's a bigger story there. But, you know, like I say, connor has got to focus on doing that now, and he is, and I'm sure we'll see some news, sh news very soon. Um, but that's, that's the focus, for, first and foremost. Comments from Tyson Fury regarding Anthony Josh without a possible fight happening. Seems that Tyson Fury is not going to have that fight at all now. Uh, it's not even worth listening. Like, one day he wants to fight him. One day he won't retire until he fights him. The next day he's never going to fight him. So I think we just let Tyson Fury... Uh, decide what he wants to do in due course you know he changes his mind every five seconds so I'm sure it will change again next week